to work at the Tokyo Metropolitan Tokyo University for only to PMU. Uh, he will stay here for uh, week till Friday. We will have a couple more lectures. Uh, if you guys interested, please uh, join us. Uh, I have to say, uh, Dr. Ning Zhang, uh, director of our center, uh, has some uh, emergency this morning, and I'll be here. So, uh, on behalf of Ning, uh, uh, I will make an introduction and welcome uh, <coughs> Okay. okay, thank you for your introduction and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, today, uh, it's very good to talk about this uh, mobility as a service issues happening in Japan. Okay. And uh, of course, I believe uh, all of you already heard what is mass. <laughs> Then I will skip to explain what is MERS. Okay. And uh, uh, last year, so I read this book. Okay. And uh, this was originally written in English by the uh, non Japanese authors uh, regarding the marginal cost okay, become zero. And uh, uh, in this book, I get two important messages. Okay. One is uh, we can get the renewable energy source at any anywhere okay, in almost zero cost. Okay. And second message was uh, any product can be processed by a 3D printer, <laughs> even though it is house, so we can create the 3D printers in the future. Okay. How do this mean? Okay. It's, uh, we don't need the conventional CD form anymore <laughs> if those worlds will be realized. Okay. We don't have to gather. Okay. At, so, how to say some uh, dense areas? So we can separate, <laughs> leave and do anything. Okay. And uh, in this situation, a trip with business purpose and logistics necessary. <laughs> okay. So this means the load of transport become minimized. Okay. I don't want <laughs> this world become realized. Okay. But uh, in some sense, we need to think about the new technology and uh, its effect that the relationship between city and transport. Okay. <coughs> and uh, okay, I'm a transport planner, okay, basically. Okay. And uh, my view is always more than 20 years, sometimes 100 years, to complete our project. Once we develop the transport facilities, it will sustain at least 100 years. Okay. But uh, today's topic, Mars, the role of ICT or IoT uh, person have a great role to realize Mars. Okay. And we, a transport infrastructure planner, should talk with them. But uh, I always think that they are big differences on the some time sense <laughs> because uh, the technology may change every five years okay but ourselves once we create the infrastructure we should maintain this for 100 years so this means uh we have how this is some a very important laws to create a smart city because uh, our sense is the longest. So every technology should meet the, the sense of the longer time duration. So we should provide a message what kind of smart city will be <laughs> okay, to the, those uh, persons, those researchers, or those uh, technicians. Okay. okay. Um, before 
talking about Mars, so we should start from ITS. Okay. Have you ever heard the ITS? Okay. Intelligent Transport Systems. Okay. This will be the seed of Mars. Okay. And uh, uh, the word ITS has started maybe in the early 90s, I remember. Before that, there's no word. No ITS definition before 80s. Okay. In the beginning of 90s, uh, ITS suddenly happened. Okay. And that uh, Japan had lead, led the ITS development or deployment. Okay. We start the, to develop the traffic control center okay, supported by uh, sensor data at uh, Metropolitan Expressway in Tokyo, so around uh, 45 years before. Okay. Maybe this was the first, okay, I believe. No other cities developed this kind of system. And uh, for in-vehicle devices, okay, so we started the tra Traveler's Information Services uh, through the onboard unit, okay. like car navigation system. The, on the car navigation systems, we provide uh, travel time information or congestion information on the map. Okay. It started uh, maybe 20 years before. And uh, the same year after this service started, we have a very great experiment on the automatic vehicle driving okay. on the expressway. And uh, uh, I think also in the United States, when we use uh, toll load, we can pay the toll automatically, electronically. Okay. And uh, Japan developed the ETC, electronic toll collection system, uh, 20 years before. Okay. And currently, it usage almost reached 100% on the expressway link. Okay. And uh, using the same communication technique, uh, we extend this ETC services, not only for the collecting the toll, but for the uh, traveler's information. <coughs> And uh, this so uh, Tokyo has a metropolitan nexus network. Mm -hmm. This is quite unique in the world. Uh, I will mention in the other lectures. Okay. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, they first developed a traffic flow management system supported by ICT technology around 40 years before, okay. they collect the traffic flow data using the sensors set every 300 meters. Okay. They always monitored the travel speed and traffic flow rate okay. and the density, okay, uh, occupancy data. And not only the sensors, but for the uh, any kind of information sources like an emergency call or a, a pap, the information from patrol car. Okay. And sometimes user send some important messages what is happening on the network. Okay. And uh, from 20 years before, uh, the technology on the, some video image processing progressed and uh, they set up so many cameras. Okay on the network. And they collect those data into the one traffic center and analyze. Okay. And, and we provide information, uh, travel time or condition length or other important information. Okay. <coughs> okay. And as already explained, this slide, so we start from uh, 
to label as information services, and next uh, we deploy the automatic co collection system. Then uh, recently, uh, those system are well integrated, okay? and uh, we finally started the ETC 2.0 services. Okay? Not only for the traffic control, uh, total collection, but for the travel information okay? services. Okay. Okay. <coughs> this one sometimes. Uh, ETC onboard unit provide the travelers information and some uh, cautious information for driving. So car is approaching on this kind. <laughs> okay. Okay. And after uh, those development and deployment, uh, situation or some communication devices or technologies have been dramatically improved or changed. Because uh, we almost, uh, we are almost de detected by the smartphone. <laughs> okay. And for the, uh, was it's very easy to understand or detect the who are there, okay? <coughs> Rather than setting the traffic sensor at uh, some specific point. <coughs> and uh, this kind of progress, to be easy to detect, track the vehicles or person. Okay. And that uh, in this situation, uh, we change, we can change the target of the traffic and traffic control okay, from a uh, group to the individual. Okay. So we can directly control yourselves okay, using those devices in the future. Okay. For example, so you may have a different uh, Time, time value, okay, time value. Time value means uh, if you can enjoy the one minute time, the travel, travel time deduction, how much is it, okay, time value. So you, you may have a different time value and uh, uh, cost for transport might be, uh, might differ person by person <laughs> considering the time value. So we can offer the different prices, okay, for the, uh, different transport services using this kind of sense uh, technology. <coughs> and uh, uh, in the IoT or ICT uh, based transport services, okay, uh, application might be very important. Okay. When we use Uber, service, we, should, we can use uh, Uber applications and very easy to reserve a car. Okay. <coughs> and uh, uh, in this situation, for example, Uber is very famous in the world. <laughs> and uh, everybody can use Uber. But uh, in Japan, actually we can use Uber, but the Still, the Uber is open for the taxi drivers. Okay. We can reserve the taxi through the Uber. Okay. And uh, uh, taxi companies also develop their original application. But this application is only for Japanese people. Mm. For the foreign digital, it's very difficult to use. So I'm wondering, so if that taxi application compete with Uber, what happened? <laughs> okay. So some, some kind of some competition between a global platformer and local platformer. Okay. 
I will explain later. So, Japanese transport company try to develop their original platform <laughs> for the Mars. So, I'm wondering what, what will be in the future. Okay. So, that kind of service should be merged into one or link with the global platform. I'm wondering which is better. <laughs> And as you know, uh, there are great uh, progress of the vehicle technology in these 10 years. Okay. Like uh, electronic vehicle, 10 years before, that was dream. <laughs> but in these 10 years, then the quality of the battery had been dramatically improved. And uh, this electronic vehicle become very practical. Yeah. Maybe 10 years before, just uh, maximum cruising distance might be less than 100 kilometers. <laughs> yeah. But recently, it finally reached the almost same distances for the yes, petrol-based engine car. Yeah. And of course, uh, automatic driving will be realized maybe in the next five years or 10 years. Okay. So these two technologies may dramatically change our mobility service in the future. <coughs> OK, I will skip this. So may, maybe as you may know, so there are six different levels on the automatic driving. <laughs> from zero to five. This may, may be, uh, th this is a worldwide standard. Okay. And uh, in many countries, uh, we already develop the vehicle matching to the level two, partially automatic driving. Okay. But from level three, uh, in case of Japan, we need to change our role. Okay. In, currently, the, this service is not allowed. <laughs> because from this level, the responsibility of the driving will be shift from person to the car. Okay. So we need to change the role. Maybe this, this situation might be the same in the United States, I think. <laughs> but your case, uh, this situation might be different the uh, state by state. <laughs> yes, I'm not sure. But in Japan, so the introducing the car with level three is still illegal. Okay. We need to change our law. <clears throat> but uh, there are some kind of discussion whether we can realize the level four or five some uh, specialists said it, they, it seems to be difficult. Finally, we cannot need this. Or some other specialists said, oh, very easy to do this. <laughs> I'm not sure which is true. Okay. <coughs> but if we think the another technology, so when such kind of technology happened, Oh, this cannot be sustained, but almost all technology will sustain and dramatically improve their performance. So I think that this uh, automatic driving world might be the same. That those technology will be realized faster than our expectation. <coughs> so this means we need to fit our mobility services okay, to those uh, automatic driving cars. <laughs> okay. And uh, like United States, the development, research and development of the automatic driving car, it's how to some uh, 
they uh, supported by the national government. <laughs> okay, national government. Okay. And uh, our national government had a lot of effort to support the research and development of uh, automatic driving. Okay. And uh, uh, they subsidized so huge funding to the several research uh, agency okay, to uh, facilitate the, those researches. Okay. <coughs> so one of the biggest one is uh, SIP, SIP. This is support, com completely supported the national government. Okay. National government. Some universities join this or some uh, motor company like Toyota. So, Join this, and uh, they continue the five years research project. Mm. I'm not sure the progress, but maybe <laughs> yes, this project already over, and maybe now we are entering to the next uh, research initiative, maybe SIP two. Mm. I'm not the situation. <coughs> and in the uh, field, okay, so. There are a lot of experiments on the automatic driving, not only for the passengers cars, but for the, such kind of public transport. Okay. And this experiment was happened in the uh, new town areas close to our universities uh, last winter. Okay. And uh, <coughs> this very uh, famous bus by the uh, SoftBank Drive. <laughs> yes. Uh, Productive by the Hino. Motor company, yes. <coughs> and uh, at this time, on the speed, they put some mm, uh, sensors. Yes. Okay. Every 20 meters. <laughs> okay. Yes. And uh, uh, okay, this and using uh, GPS information and using this. <coughs> uh, detectors that they perfectly identify the location okay, on the load. And uh, uh, at this time, the maximum speed might be just uh, 20 or 25 kilometers per hour, very slow one. Okay. But uh, they successfully com uh, complete the experiment okay, in the uh, environment of the real road traffic. But uh, this kind of effort, uh, in the air, it's very difficult to operate only by the GPS information okay, in some condition. This area, there are a lot of street trees like this. And in, in this situation, uh, only the the operation only by the GPS seems to be difficult. So we need additional positioning information. But it costs too much. Okay. So we need to get a more data okay, to realize this kind of services in the densely developed urban areas. <coughs> And 10 years before, we never have this kind of services. Okay. But within these 10 years, uh, this kind of light share or light hailing services become very popular. Okay. This morning, I used this <laughs> to come to. <laughs> but uh, in Japan, uh, this service is not allowed okay. by go. In Japan, we, when I use, uh, we use uh, Uber services, we just, we can just reserve the taxi <laughs> or hire services. Okay. This is not ride share or ride hailing. Okay. And, uh, but uh, in Japan now, we have a very severe discussions whether we accept this kind of new service or not. Okay. 
considering the business sustainability of the bus, buses or taxis. Okay. Because uh, bus company or taxi company always against to accept this kind of services. So we should care about their business when we accept this kind of services. Okay. <coughs> but uh, in Tokyo city center or mega cities in Japan, uh, frankly speaking, we don't have to accept this kind of services because there are a lot of taxis on the street and we have a good public transport services, okay, including subway services. But in the rural area of Japan, they are suffering from using public transport services. And uh, the pressure for introducing this kind of service has uh, strong in the, those rural areas. And uh, some communities try to use this uh, Uber platform for the mobility for the elderly people in the areas. But uh, this kind of trial still have a somehow discussion with the taxi companies <laughs> in the areas. Mm. And uh, uh, frankly, this is just an experiment, okay. not practical, <laughs> okay, not practical. And uh, se several taxi companies develop their application. Okay. Maybe the interface is kind, kind of Uber, Uber's one. <laughs> very similar, very similar. But this application needs, they never provide the English version or Chinese version. So uh, those who can understand Japanese only use this. And this is quite different from the global application. This is a local application. I'm wondering in the next five years or 10 years, this kind of application will be sustainable or sustained. Will you sustain or not? Fi finally, uh, many taxi companies belong to the Uber service <laughs> to accept more foreign visitors. <laughs> I'm wondering what will happen what will happen in the future. Okay. And uh, in my study field, so up to 10 years before, the one of the very important topics on the education of the transport planning is the choice behavior, okay. choice, choice. Because uh, to make a trip, there are a lot of choices, a lot of choices, many choices inside the use of transport, like this. Not only choosing the transport mode, but for the, uh, this, this is a case of uh, recreational trip. So when, when or where, or what kind of transport mode at what time. So we need to decide so many factors. Okay. And, but uh, theoretically, okay, we don't understand the, all of the information of the choice alternatives. Okay. There might be some kind of some uncertainty. Okay. Then, uh, to express our choice behavior, we use the, a probability form, okay. percentage of choice. Okay. This was a maximum effort for us. Okay. And uh, each choice or alternative has uh, systematic term of utility. Okay. Utility is a kind of satisfaction satisfaction when we choose this okay. and systematic fixed one and random one okay. so this is random so choice cannot be deterministic so choice can be stochastic okay. stochastic 
And mathematically, we develop this kind of <laughs> scale. And finally, this is a quite uh, famous model, logit model, okay, was derived. And uh, uh, this kind of choice modeling was the hot issues in the transport planning and policies field. Okay. But uh, recently, uh, we can get a lot of high quality travelers information okay, through the sensors okay, in the, this IoT era. So we can minimize. We can minimize this. Minimize this. Then, and that many of the travelers just follow the alternatives, the application set. <laughs> then, uh, I'm wondering, this kind of research or education is important or not? <laughs> we don't do this anymore. <laughs> And a uh, few years before, I made uh, some research okay, using big data of the uh, traffic on the express network. And uh, uh, conventionally, uh, travel time and the toll is the uh, two biggest factors for the good choice. But in this research, we finally understand they just follow the car navigation <laughs> route. Okay. Very less impact on the travel time and toll. So yes. Follow what? Hmm? So follow what? Follow, maybe follow the, uh, the route, the car, car navigation indicate, okay. rather than the travel time or toll. Okay. They completely believe the car navigation system. <laughs> So this means no, almost no impact on the travel time change or uh, uh, toll level. Okay. <laughs> okay. And uh, before the Mars started, we already developed the so nice uh, navigation and route search services based on the internet. For example, this is one of the very uh, famous brands in Japan, Navitime. Okay. This is a case. Well, this morning, I, I, I tried this. <laughs> and for, from uh, our campus station to the uh, Tokyo city center. So they just show us the several alternatives of the route. And if I take this, so there are some detailed information, what time, or uh, what car is suitable, okay? It's across to the upstairs or escalators, okay? Or uh, that being uh, congested or not, okay? Or this uh, almost uh, no passengers standing on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, some person should stand on, but not contested. Okay. If we search in the early morning, and morning peak hour, this become yellow or red, very contested. So they provide so a lot of information okay, for the route choice. Okay. <laughs> okay. But uh, recently, uh, this mass was uh, proposed uh, in Finland. And uh, uh, they combined the all of the, tra all, all of the uh, transport means, okay, including bicycle, bikes, uh, taxis, uh, Uber services, and uh, public transport services, okay, into one application, okay, and uh, uh, not only provide the route alternative, but for the this application can 
uh, through these applications, the travelers can pay the fare. Okay. And in some condition, reserve, we can reserve the route. Okay. Then uh, this kind of application may change our conventional mobility business. Okay. <coughs> so, so this uh, app is just for Finland? Yes, this is for Finland. And But maybe some cities, some countries now accept this application, like Singapore, maybe they will use this. Okay. Or uh, also in Japan, some cities are try to use this WIM platform okay, or the MARS services. Some of you already understand the concept of mass. Okay. So mass, a kind of platform. Okay. And their function is searching the route, to make a reservation, okay. a ticketing, a payment, authentication. And, and sometimes through this mass platform, they can collect the huge data of the travelers. But uh, only, of course, as you already understand, only the platform, okay, this system cannot be okay, sustained. They need the operators. Okay. <laughs> okay. Only the application, this is not mobility service. Okay. They need the operators. Okay. And we already have those conventional operators like railways, bus, LRT, or rental car taxis. And uh, recently, uh, car share, bike share, ride hailing, ride sharing, okay, happened. So, Mars platform make the route service, okay, mobility services combined by combining those services provided by the each operators. <coughs> and in the textbook of mass, so we always see this kind of uh, triangle form. Okay. The level of mass. Okay. So For example, Navi time I mentioned before, they provide the information not only for the uh, railways, but for the buses or uh, car navigation. So if we pay some amount, uh, they provide the integrated information of the from the origin to destination, mixed with the railway, bus, taxis, or as a transport mode. Okay. This is regarded as level one. <laughs> okay, level one. Okay. But if the Navi time accept a booking or payment in that system, that service become level two. Okay. And uh, uh, okay, so so and th this level two is. Uh, Sorry, and this is only uh, some specific transport means like railways or buses. But if that, that application combines that those transport means, the level becomes three. Okay. And level four, it's very difficult to explain. So we, today I will skip this. But uh, this win Finland application or the case of uh, Helsinki, their capital cities, they all already have uh, level three services, okay. integrating the, any kind of transport mean okay, and into one route services and offer them, and they can reserve and they can pay them out. <coughs> and uh, this kind of services, they Yes, 
problematic for the theory <laughs> of the uh, transport payment. So our industry finally started subscription services. Okay. <laughs> for example, in, in the case of WIM, in the case of WIM, uh, in Finland, Helsinki cities, so they have unlimited services okay, for months. Okay. So if they pay uh, just less than 500 euro, so they can use the city bike anytime. Okay, anytime. Taxi within five kilometers, they can use anytime. <laughs> okay. And rent a car anytime. Okay. And public transport, also some uh, unlimited. Okay. So if they use this services one year it's okay so they just pay um, six thousand six thousand euros and uh, if we compare with this cost and buying a car <laughs> Which is better? Okay. Many of them choose this. If they give it in the city center, in the city center, they don't have to have a car. Okay. So also in Japan, so we some of the uh, mass consortium seek the possibility of introducing the subscription services. <coughs> so in, in this kind of services, it's very difficult to understand the time value, <laughs> theoretically. Okay. And uh, not, not, only, not only in Japan, but in the world, if we observe the who provide the mass platform or platform, okay. So, in my understanding, there are seven patterns. Okay. First one, the car manufacturing company, okay, for example, like Daimler provide Mubel, Mubel, okay, or in Japan. Uh, Toyota Motor Company jointly with uh, SoftBank, a mo mo mobile home company, provide will provide a Monet service. Okay. And second, this is uh, the most uh, frequently happened in Japan. A uh, railway company provide mass platform. And third one is like a Uber. If Uber start their services, not only for the passenger car driving, but for the uh, public transport, their service become mass. Okay. The third pattern, ride hailing company. A fourth one, telecommunication company. Okay. Like a mobile home company, you start the mass application. And navigation companies, for example, in Japan, so Navitime, I mentioned, they have a strong intention to enter into the mask world. Okay. And six one is uh, regional government. For example, I, I had that uh, Los Angeles in the United States, they developed their original mass applications. I forgot the name, number. <laughs> Uh, maybe Tosh, Toshi, we don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I've seen yes. Ah, Egwe Go. Something like that. Yeah, Egwe Go, yes. Mm. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and final one, in case of Japan, so travel agency have uh, some strong intention <laughs> to provide, like JTB, the 
JTB, the Japan Travel Bureaus. This is the biggest uh, travel agency in Japan. For example, the, this monet, monet by Toyota, yes, and SoftBank. <coughs> For example, Toyota has a very strong in intention to introduce this kind of automatic driving cars. And uh, to realize this, associated with this development, they develop the mass platform. Okay. Mass platform. Their motivation is this, okay, rather than this. <laughs> they, I, I, this is my understanding. They have uh, their goal is this, okay, in the business, and that using this service as well. So they need their original Mars platform. <laughs> and uh, these uh, two examples are initiated by the regular company in Japan, okay? regular company. Okay? One of the biggest private railway companies, Odaq, okay? associated with the uh, Bell Laboratory. This, this is like a Navi time. Okay? <laughs> Navi time. Loot searching company. Okay. And uh, their intention is to implement the common database of the any kind of transport business. Okay. <coughs> and uh, third type. It's at Tokyo, one of the biggest private railway company, and they are this company okay, introduced the application for the tourist, okay, mass application for tourists okay, in the specific areas. <coughs> and uh, this application was is supported at Mubel. By Daimler, yeah. <coughs> I heard it. So currently, uh, there are a lot of ideas of the mass application of platforms in Japan. Okay. I'm wondering, finally, we may have uh, more than 20 applications <laughs> in Japan. Mm. And in near future, we should merge into a few, uh, two or three major applications. Yeah. <coughs> And uh, not only the private company, but for the national government has a very strong interest on supporting the mass implementation in regions. Okay. Okay. So they have uh, some subsidy project, uh, subsidy uh, framework to the effort of the regional government or regional transport companies for introducing the mass services. Okay. <coughs> <clears throat> and uh, this is my observations. Okay, in the uh, uh, mass in Japan. Okay, what we should discuss. Okay, in the future. Uh, first one, uh, we should well consider the meaning or role of local platformer because I mentioned more than twenty. Platform uh, will be developed in your future. So uh, I'm wondering how do those platforms compete each other? And the uh, second issue might be can they defeat the global platformers? So finally, for example, Google do something. What happened? <laughs> And the uh, third one, uh, which platform governed the market finally? Okay. 
And the second discussion issue might be that what kind of business model okay, will be? Hmm. I'm still wondering the business model of those uh, mass applications, or mass platformers. Because uh, I'm, I will mention in the different lectures, so we have a long history of uh, highly privatized public transportation businesses. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, population density might be quite important parameters to be considered in the mass implementation. Okay. And uh, revenue management, for example, in the case of uh, subscription type services, how do they share the revenue or profit? Okay. And uh, uh, the seventh type, like uh, some uh, travel agency oriented mass services, their maybe intention might be how do we mix with a transport service and attraction service? Then, if uh, they can well combine the attraction and trans access transport services to that attraction, maybe they can get high profit. <laughs> so intention of JTP might be like that, okay, I believe. And <coughs> last one might be, again, how do we adapt the ride share, ride hailing services in our society? Okay. Of course, the uh, bus and taxi companies' acceptance might be quite important. <coughs> and I expect in the uh, uh, rural area of Japan, so, Everybody can be a driver <laughs> okay. because population density is too low in those areas. So we need to find the drivers for the car sharing, car hailing services. Okay. Everybody should be the driver. Okay. In this case, they can increase their income. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this Third issues in my laboratories, we started the research okay. two months before. <laughs> two months before. So, no, no result currently. But uh, we focus on some areas to discuss these issues. Okay. Because this area is the sun. Uh, one of the famous tourist destinations close to Tokyo, just uh, 150 kilometers okay, from the Tokyo city center. Very easy access by car. And uh, this area is, uh, the, this area is a high population density. Okay. But most of the tourist attraction located this is the distribution are quite different. Okay. So in this situation, the light sharing cannot be realized because the local resident of the travel travel area like this and quite apart from the tourist movement. So in this situation, light hanging service might be required. <laughs> but uh, travel time from this and this, and it takes 30 minutes. <laughs> 30 minutes. In this situation, I'm wondering light hanging service might be sustainable or not. Okay. So we need to have some idea to realize the car sharing, car hanging services in this area, okay. because there are almost no public transport services <laughs> due to that low population density. Okay. <coughs> yeah, yes, so, so yes. And uh, I asked uh, Juan, 
you may, yes. yes, to follow your ideas. Some you know, light hanging dessert. <laughs> okay. Yes. That, that idea is quite informative for us. Okay. And, uh, okay, last two slides. <coughs> so if we, the Mars system well uh, developed or uh, automatic driving well developed, uh, we need to change our ideas on the uh, this is some best transport mode, transport mean okay, in the region. Okay. So this chart, uh, conceptual one, uh, this axis of three planes, okay. and <coughs> uh, vertical axis is passenger density. Okay, this is almost equal to population density. Okay. So railway services, we need the high population density and longer trip planes. For example, in the case of Tokyo, we have around 40 million people in the metropolitan area. Okay, and their commuting length is 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers. So <coughs> Tokyo is one of the best environment for the railway business. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> Tokyo. <coughs> okay. But a uh, city like uh, Los Angeles or uh, here, Austin are same. So maybe population density not so high. Okay. And uh, three planes is not so long compared with Tokyo. So in this situation, uh, bus might be the maximum. Bus. Okay. And uh, uh, in areas with uh, low passenger densities, any public transport service cannot be sustained. And finally, the most of the residents use car. Okay. This is a, a conceptual diagram. Okay. But if we start the share mobility or uh, automatic driving car realized, we should change this diagram. Yes. What kind of what kind of shape will be realized? I'm not sure still. I'm, I'm still not sure, but maybe we should change our mind. <coughs> and maybe 30 years later or 40 years later, <laughs> if this kind of service will start, we should change the urban form. <laughs> okay, urban form. Okay. Street design or uh, shape of the building. <laughs> the, uh, the, the urban form or transport desi system design are highly dependent on such kind of some progress of the new technology. Okay. So I think, uh, now, actually, frankly speaking, transport planner like me had a very hard situation right now. <laughs> we should change everything. Mm. We should learn the lot of new uh, ideas or knowledge on the new technologies. But uh, very fantastic work. <laughs> very challenging. Mm. So in these 10 years, um, the conventional transport planner almost quit. <laughs> mm. And the younger generation with uh, much knowledge on the IoT or ICT or big data or kind of new technologies may enter into this field and uh, govern the trans uh, transport planning field. I still have more 10 years or 20 years to do this kind of work. So currently, 
uh, I should quickly learn this kind of <laughs> new technology. Okay. So I hope uh, the younger generation like you, so we enter into this field <laughs> okay. to change our urban form or to change our uh, transport systems matching to those uh, change of the urban form. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Yes. It's a very uh, wonderful and informative presentation. I, it's a few comments. I feel we are in the um, imagine of the 20th century when the time transportation uh, mode is available, how far you can reach. And when you first encounter a car on for the further the model T and the how you feel about the, your uh, ability. Just thinking about Boston. Boston was built by a city fully the house transportation system. And now we have a car a little bit of test. And uh, we always have some problems. We always heard about some new day. Traffic is getting involved. That's because the city structure is to build on old transportation mode. We are feel we're in a turning point, just like uh, when we move from a house traffic to car traffic. We are at that location. If not, the scale probably even larger with the autonomous ground vehicle and the personally uh, helicopter like the Uber helicopter. So. It's both an opportunity and a challenge. Yeah. And there is, I think that the team is very familiarized with that. Uh, that's a, I, I think that's a big opportunity for all of you guys. From different disciplines, not just the transportation planning, but from the computer science, electrical engineering, more important than that, on the position. Sure. Yeah. It's all these technologies. So yes. That's mm. our new technology. Yes. Questions? How do you think you should, or maybe you shouldn't, but how do you think you should go about defending your uh, smaller companies from a bigger one like Google? Mm. Or should you just let them to the wolves and see who comes out on top? Mm. Maybe mm, I'm st still wondering <laughs> that uh, that problem. So, of course, um, uh, Google was very small <laughs> yeah. okay, in the beginning. And uh, maybe even if the new uh, mass platformer started its business, and that, vision, uh, that service is well developed. And uh, uh, many of the users uh, appreciate it, and uh, this become global. So that kind of application may defeat the Google. So it depends okay. <laughs> on the quality of services. But uh, the problem is that Google already stored the lot of inf uh, travelers' information through the current services. So frankly speaking, to, de to defeat the Google, so it seems very difficult. Yeah. Mm. So sometimes such kind of company should collaborate with Google. Mm. Maybe finally Google may buy that. <laughs> yes, this is reality, I think. Yes. <laughs> So basically, I, I think one thing uh, jumped in my mind is like uh, you also talked about right now when people have many different several options, mm. their decision making process is not determined by travel time or whether they have tools mm. or not. Now their decision making 
process, the food of Chen, right? Changed to a country mm. with no like, uh, what's available in front of them. They don't think about the logic, right? Mm. So, if that is the case, um, so that means people are not necessarily like a reasonable decision when they are like a real carrier choice. They are making their decisions based on what the information presents mm. to them. So I was thinking of maybe in Marx we can like another important perspective is to share a full spectrum of uh, available rules at any given time to share all the information to the like mm. make a uh, basic decision. Basic yes. What do you think of that? Yes, actually it it, it too it's right. Yes. So um Yes, uh, actually, uh, there has some lot of options, really, option inside their suggestion, uh, their route or uh, services. Uh, it might have a value okay. uh, because to determine the destination, uh, to set the origin and destination, the most most of the available service had uh, almost same travel time, <laughs> and uh, fair, not so di different. Okay. Then this means uh, even if we increase the option, so the importance of the travel time and the travel cost for the choice might be not so big. Okay. So rather than showing the option, uh, including the uh, avail available option that consists of the various kind of transport means might be quite important in that moment. So maybe I think uh, your understanding might be better too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about uh, how this new technology, how uh, these new uh, approaches uh, for ability, uh, mobility uh, would have any impact on the citizens who live in cities. Would, would that uh, have any impact on how they experience the city? Uh, since we would experience cities very differently when we are on a car or when we are walking yes. or mm. we are riding a train, and uh, how would that change people's experience and perception of city? Yes, that's uh, basically, um, we have a very strong belief currently that without car, <laughs> so maybe uh, quality of life become reduced because uh, availability of the mobility might be quite important okay, to maintain the quality of life. So in the current service situation of public transport, uh, without car, it's very difficult to maintain the quality of life. Okay. But um, once those people experience the good quality of public transport services, so some of them may change their mind. And uh, in our study field, so uh, we have uh, some ideas of mobility management. Okay. Ask the people to change their behavior, okay. providing the information of uh, if you use a public transport service, you can uh, go. Uh, you, uh, you can go there uh, on time, or uh, you can go there and some, enjoy something. Mm. And uh, this is the same as a car transport. <laughs> okay. So uh, some of them uh, try to do the suggested 
action. And some of them evaluate, highly evaluate the result. And uh, they finally gave up to have a car. So maybe uh, some percentage of the travelers uh, already have this kind of tendency. Okay. And uh, uh, for you know, elderly people, elderly people. So uh, now we have very severe problem uh, of the, some tra traffic accident caused by the elderly people. And uh, uh, this case, uh, they also have a strong belief that if they give up driving, they cannot go out. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, but if we well provide the information on the public other public transport options, including public transport services, and uh, uh, if they well understand the feasibility of using such kind of services or new uh, transport means except cars. So they may change their mind finally. So anyway, experience might be quite important. <laughs> yes. To overcome the problem you mentioned. Yes. <laughs> Without experience it's very difficult to evaluate. <laughs> Thank you for that.